Today's Spotlight is brought to you in part by presenting sponsor, Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Liz Spencer, and today I'm joined by three local nonprofits, The Brightside Theater, Heart of a Veteran, and Basic Dignities. You're watching Spotlight, and joining me now from Brightside Theater is Julianne Kornack and Jeffrey Cass. Welcome back. Thank oh. you for being here again. We love having you as guests. <laughs> so, Julie, tell me all about Brightside Theater. Yeah, so we actually started Brightside Theater and started performing in uh, 2011. And uh, we wanted to bring a professional theater company mm -hmm. to uh, Naperville, which is my hometown. I've lived here now almost 25 years. Um, so we kind of looked for a great space to provide a professional experience uh, to our patrons and we landed at North Central College and we are here to entertain and enlighten and to educate our audiences through comedies and musicals so we like to have some fun on the stage yeah. and, uh, and again this is uh, our 10th anniversary season uh, that we're going to be bringing forward for our audiences that will be coming up soon. That's awesome. So Jeff, tell me a little bit about what you have in store for us this season. Yeah, so first of all, we're just so excited to be able to get back <laughs> on the stage right? after like 18 months. We had to yes. shut down in the middle of two shows, one on the main stage and one for the kids, which that was heartbreaking. But we are back mm -hmm. and we are coming back with Miracle on 34th Street, a live musical radio play. Um, the Burt Backrack and uh, Neil Simon musical Promises Promises in concert and then uh, Don't Dress for Dinner, which is a farce. And then finally we'll wrap up with Mamma Mia, which was oh. one of the shows that we were yeah. supposed to do, but had, because of the shutdown, couldn't get to. So we're finally getting to it. <laughs> That's wonderful. Julie, how did you pick these shows for this year and why? Yeah, I mean, we wanted to kind of show and represent what Brightside's all about. You know, we do have that title, Brightside Theater, right. and it's to look on the bright side of life. And I think just with the world and what we've gone through, right. we really wanted to just kind of have a little bit of a escapism, really enjoyment, some nostalgia. Um, and so these shows, I think, really show off who we are and what we like to present our audiences. Um, obviously, starting off with Miracle on 34th Street, um, just a nostalgic holiday play, mm -hmm. great family-friendly musical to bring the family to um, and perfect timing of course uh, and we specifically chose Don't Dress for Dinner that's actually the show that brought our the founding members together okay. and why we started to uh, kind of plan our, our Brightside Theater adventure um, because of the love of farce. So it is, it's a great farce. It is just so funny and just keeps piling on the laughter as you continue to go through the, through the show. So we're really excited about bringing that. And Mamma Mia for us mm -hmm. is the extension of the season that didn't fully finish. So why not celebrate the return with just a fun loving show? And really the Promises Promises production is our just our second time of doing this new uh, concert version series which just runs for just six performances this year we did three in our first season and now six in this one and it just brings a little different take to the audience to come and see a focus just on the music um, and with the great tunes from Burt Backrack and Say a Little Prayer for You. It's just very nostalgic and just a fun loving show that people know the tunes. So we're excited to bring that whole season to everybody. I just really like the variety that you all offer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can and you should just, you know, sign up for all six shows, or five shows, six shows, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> uh, go all the time. But then you can just get to see something new and different every time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you, Jeff, you're in rehearsal right now. Tell us a little bit we about are, that. We are. We are for Miracle on 34th Street. So it's presented in a different way. It's presented as a radio play. So you're, we're taking you back to 1947 mm -hmm. in a radio mm -hmm. studio yeah. where we'll have um, just... Um, sound effects, so a person is going to be making all the sound effects that you would hear, um, and then we've only got a handful of actors and a live piano player, and um, two of the actors play like 20 some parts mm -hmm. each, Fine. so they're constantly just flipping on a dime, changing their characterization, but it's really entertaining because, yes, visually there's going to be a lot to look at, and you know, you're going to hear a lot, but it also, you can just sit in the audience and for a moment close your eyes and think you're listening to the radio, because it's going to be just like the old time radio 
that um, that used to be around back in the day. Right. Well, and, and a lot of your audience is going to be fascinated because they don't really know that much about right. old time radio. So yeah. it's a Correct. whole new experience. Yeah. Just find, figuring out how to make all the sound effects has oh, been sure. an education in itself. Yes, yes. And, and the fact that they, you know, the same actor played, you know, 14 yeah, characters yeah, right. and you yeah. had no idea. Right, so, you're right. Um, Julie, tell me, you guys have a very successful youth program, too. Tell me a little bit yeah. about that. So our Brightside Theater Youth Project was established, actually, in our second full season. And it was really meant to give an opportunity for youth to work with professional designers, so that being directors, music directors, vocal coaches, choreographers, and costumers, and really to know how to do a show, really from beginning to end. And while we do focus on that, the education piece, which is a big piece of our mission as well, really allows these kids to learn just life skills. Mm -hmm. How do you work as a team? How do you problem solve? Some of those uh, planning skills, executive planning skills, how do you go from one spot to the next and plan? How long does it take to get there? Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we've built this program and this season we're doing uh, The Descendants, the musical, so a Disney production. Uh, that's a little bit of a twist again because we always like to provide a twist. Um, so this year we are um, having seven adult actors mm -hmm. um, that will be playing the parental roles within the show. So they're going to be act, acting as mentors mm -hmm. to the youth Nice. on stage and they've never had that opportunity. In addition to our last year during Frozen, we uh, had a audio described um, production and uh, a, a prior to the show, we had a touch tour and then we're gonna have an ASL um, production nice. as well. So just a, a further way to reach out um, to other members of our community so they have a full theater experience with us so kind of just pulls in all the education piece so I'm, I'm really excited it's going to be just a, a really fun show <laughs> yes well and you hit it on the head that you know you're teaching theater skills but it's really life mm -hmm. it is yeah, yeah. It's, it's always about you know teaching life skills when they're not paying attention to the <laughs> fact that you're teaching life skills so exactly. that makes it so successful um, speaking of success you had a really neat summer program summer in the parks or theater in the parks um, Jeff, tell me about it. Yeah, so because of COVID, um, it kind of in a blessing in disguise <laughs> brought forward something that we had been talking about for a few years now, being able to continue to break down the walls of any barriers of anybody in the area, being able to consume live free entertainment that we provide. So we uh, partnered with the Naperville Park District mm -hmm. and uh, we created a Rogers and Hammerstein review and put it in the park. So it's uh, theater in the our bright side theater in the parks. Mm -hmm. And um, we combined it also with our kids program that uh, over the summer, we did two summer camps, uh, Annie Junior. And uh, we had all these little girls belting out the sun will come out tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and it was great. And then in the, in the uh, evenings on two evenings, we had um, the review and we had a great outpouring from the community and people coming up and just saying, thank you so much. This is something I needed. Like I haven't been out since this all started. Like you don't know what this is doing for me. Mm -hmm. And we had kids like this tall running around all the way to people that, you know, of a later age, just who singing the music along and just yeah. having a good time. <laughs> so it was such a feel good moment for us and we're gonna continue it. Yeah. Um, this is something that um, started this summer because of COVID, but we're, it's something we're definitely gonna continue and expand upon uh, this coming summer. Any, any hints or clues of what you're going to perform? <laughs> You well, we were actually just talking about that the other day, but um, we're still going to, obviously, to be Broadway music. We're just trying to figure out if we're going to go with a specific composer again or if we're going to be a little more broad. Well, that's fine. It's always nice um, to have, you know, Broadway tunes that we all know yeah. that we can at least <laughs> sing along. Yeah. Out of tune and poor. That would yes. be neat. <laughs> and so that's, that's great. Congratulations on 10 years. Thank that's you. Huge. Thank you. We Thank so you. appreciate you being part of the community and bringing so much you know light into it so we need thank it. you yeah thank you so much <laughs> if you're interested in learning more about brightside theater please visit their website we're going to take a quick break but stay tuned we're coming right back for more than 150 years you've believed in Busey. today more than ever we believe in you to our healthcare workers first responders and local businesses you're central to the communities we're proud to call home. Busey's grateful to partner with you and your families through life's ups and downs, today and for generations to come. Because as neighbors helping neighbors, we're in this together. Busey, grateful to serve the communities we call home. 
If you're just tuning in, you're watching Spotlight. I'm your guest host, Liz Spencer. And joining me now from Heart of a Veteran is Jordan Howe. Jordan, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So tell me a little bit about Heart of a Veteran. So Heart of a Veteran, we started actually six years ago. Yeah. Uh, we wrote a book uh, to bring light to the epidemic of um, veteran suicide. And the stories in the book were written by veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, and then Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom. Um, we wanted people to see how veterans were coping and or how not, they weren't coping and and just bring attention to that um, that issue all the money we make from the book goes to an organization called the brothers in arms foundation and after the book came out a couple years went by and i was like is that the end like was that all we were supposed to do <laughs> and we sort of talked about it um and I decided to, I'm a massage therapist, so I decided to take what I know and open a holistic wellness center for veterans and their caregivers to provide holistic approaches to healing um, that they normally wouldn't get. But we cover the cost of it at 100%. So um, that's, that's what we do. We provide anything from chiropractic care to massage to we teach um, emotional freedom technique. We do Reiki, vibrational bowl therapy hypnosis. There's all kinds of things that we can offer our veterans. That's wonderful. Thank you. So the veteran and their caregiver doesn't, don't they pay, pay anything. So no how, insurance, nothing. Nothing. So how do you get the uh, ends to meet? Yeah. So <laughs> we um, have organizations that are corporate donors to mm -hmm. us now. We have an annual fundraiser every year. Um, that's usually in September. Uh, we get grants. I have somebody who's helping me write some grants. And so as we um, sort of pick up people along the way who are interested in helping us, some people just are individual donors or will th will do an auction item of some kind. And so we do whatever we can do to bring the money in. Um, and that's, you know, but it's all, it's all donation based right now. Wow. Yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. And How do you... Do you partner with anybody that helps kind of We do. So um, we, we partner. There's a couple other organizations that are fairly local. Allen Force is one of them. Mm -hmm. They provide amazing support to veterans. And um, Donna and I have done some uh, events together. Uh, so we um, piggyback off of each other from time to time. Um, Operation Welcome You Home is mm -hmm. another amazing organization, yes. and they are actually sort of guiding us through an event that we're doing uh, December 12th. So, um, but what we really partner with are other uh, wellness centers in other states. So we help veterans nationwide. Um, we partner, for example, with a group called Native Salt out of uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. And we send veterans there for guided meditation, um, ohm circles, vibrational bowl therapy, and massages. Uh, and then they, we uh, negotiate rates with them. The veterans make their appointments. Native Salt calls us. We give them the okay. And they just have our credit card on file, and we pay the bill. Wow. So that's what we're doing. That, that's awesome. Yes. And, and what do you hear from your veterans? Some of them say, I think the biggest thing I've heard is, um, I finally have some hope. So they're finally feeling like they're getting some help or that somebody heard them or, um, and, and some of them don't respond well and we appreciate that as well. But that's when other organizations like the Road Home at Rush Hospital, um, are, are great resources. There's help out there that we can get these veterans where they need to go, um, but as a holistic approach to healing person myself, mm -hmm. um, I think that's what works best. So uh, for me, so then I wanna share that with other people and give them options. So, Absolutely, yeah. it is about options because not one size does not fit all. Exactly. And we're a little bit of one size fit all yeah. society. Yeah where most of us don't fit in that. Right. So tell me a little bit about what the future looks like for the 
Yeah, so we had to pivot for COVID, um, okay. for sure. We wanted to open a, a clinic. Uh, we had found some space in 20, March of 2020, and then the shutdown happened. Mm -hmm. So um, we just decided to send people to practitioners a, instead of having our own space right now. It'll come. It'll eventually mm -hmm. happen. It's just a matter of now we have to raise some more funds, find the space, and and move forward with it and pull the trigger. And um, with things still sort of up in the air, yeah. I'm a little hesitant to jump into something right now. I'll give it another six months maybe or so. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got some other events coming up, fundraising events coming up, and I'm hoping by next summer at the very latest, we'll be able to have our own space here locally. Awesome. Yeah. So tell me about some of those events, because that's going to be a, a major, <laughs> yeah. it's a major so, thing you need. So yeah. tell me a little bit about events. So we have an event in um, December 12th at the Plainfield American Legion, mm -hmm. and we are partnering with the Road Home uh, for that. Or, and it's called I'll Be Home for Christmas. Nice. And it's a 1940s vintage Christmas. Nice. So we have everything from horse-drawn carriage rides to um, a full Christmas dinner, uh, we have things for the kids. We're providing 40 um, full Christmas meals for 40 veterans, families uh, that have been donated by um, the Knights of Columbus and the Road Home and Heart of a Veteran are all partnering to get those from Mariano's. So um, that is really just for fun and information. It's just to let people know we're out there and that's what we're doing. Um, we do have a surprise hopefully happening that day. Uh, we can't talk about it right now. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. Um, but uh, I'm really excited about that event. So, and I'm really excited to partner with the Road Home for this event. Um, we have a golf outing May 21st of 2022 mm -hmm. um, at Tamarack. Great. So that'll, that'll be a lot of fun. And then July 4th, there's going to be a huge 4th of July party in Champaign, Illinois, um, that is hosted by a veteran that we actually helped. That's awesome. A couple of years ago. So yeah, so that's, those are our upcoming events. Well, that's good. It's necessary. So people it need is. to yeah. get out and, and do that yeah. or just at the end of year is coming up. Yes. So just write you a check for all the Please great. Please do. And I know there's a lot of corporations that have end of year funds that they mm -hmm. need to donate and we are... A Illinois 501c3, so please feel free to donate and get that year-end uh, donation. <laughs> right, absolutely. And and you're you're helping veterans, and you're doing it in a very uh, grassroots, yeah. down in there yeah. type of way. So yeah. you're really helping those that need. So thank you for it's what you do. It's very exciting. Yes, thank, thank you, you for so having much, us. Jordan. All right. To find out more about a heart of a veteran, please visit their website. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. For more than 150 years, you've believed in Busey. Today, more than ever, we believe in you. To our healthcare workers, first responders, and local businesses, you're central to the communities we're proud to call home. Busey's grateful to partner with you and your families through life's ups and downs, today and for generations to come. Because as neighbors helping neighbors, we're in this together. Busey, grateful to serve the communities we call home. The Naperville Police Department needs your help to solve crime and bring offenders to justice. When you submit tips to Naperville Crime Stoppers, you help keep our city one of the safest in the nation. Tips to Naperville Crime Stoppers have helped solve hundreds of crimes and recover over $7 million in drugs, property, and cash. Remember, tipsters remain anonymous and receive cash rewards up to $1,000 if their tips lead to an arrest. Call the tip line at 630 Four two zero six zero zero six. You may have that one piece of information that solves the crime. Welcome back to Spotlight, and joining me now from Basic Dignities is Patricia Fragan. Patricia, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for inviting us. Remind our viewers a little bit about basic dignities. What's it all about? So we try and tackle a large project at a time Great. to help a community, not just an individual, but an entire community. Um, we have done some wonderful work. Our first project was a water project in Uganda, 
and we hit a really big well and our, our work was able to take care of more than one community. We were able to, to serve a couple of different communities with a single well, which was phenomenal. Um, we turned our attention to those people trapped at the south of the border for a while. Um, our goal was not political. Our goal was to keep anyone from taking an unnecessary risk mm -hmm. because they were getting desperate. So we sent down food and clothing and water and things for children to stay engaged. Um, and then COVID, of course, hit and everything kind of put the brakes on for a little while, which was hard on all of the nonprofits. Um, but we came back as it started to end in order to help a school in Kenya to reopen. Traditionally, their schools, everyone sits in a circle on the floor together and shares a ladle out of a, a water bucket. Mm -hmm. And none of them could reopen until each student had their own desk, their own water, their own books. And so that, that was beyond the, the things that people could afford to pay for. So we were able to assist the school to reopen. Um, and uh, now we're looking forward to new adventures. How, how do you choose your products or your projects or do they find you? So my wonderful partner in Basic Dignities is a young woman named Brittany Sterling, who I met up with when she lived in this area and volunteered for, we volunteered with a nonprofit together. And we just hit it off so well. She happens to be an environmental engineer in water. So that's what got us started. Um, from there, it's about issues that come up that we read about in the news, people that we know, connections that we know we can leverage to be successful. Right, because you're, you're leveraging some really big projects from here in, into a country that is struggling in so many ways. Yes. So good for you, amazing. What are some current projects you're working on that my viewers would be interested in, maybe could lend some support? So the work we did with uh, a school made us just start thinking more about education and how when one is educated, you can do more for your entire community. And so we decided that we wanted to help young women go to college. They needed to focus in one of three areas of study for us. Okay engineering so that they can do the water projects that we started out doing, but just a lot more of them. Medicine, because there is such a dire need in every country for especially female physicians, nurses, medical care, and educators. Because as we see in our own country, having a role model that looks like you can make a huge difference in your ability to, to stay focused, to succeed, to excel. And we want other young women to see female educators in places where they might not necessarily have done so before. So we are focusing our efforts in Africa right now. Um, right now we have three countries where we have found young women who we are going to be able to support. Um, we have a hospital, um, the Bungalow Hospital in Gabon, where we have three nursing students. Um, their program is a three-year nursing program, um, after which they offer each of the students a job at that hospital. We have some young women in Kenya who have qualified for the engineering program at the, one of the universities. There actually, I think we're talking about two. And we are working with a fabulous partner nonprofit in Malawi called Warm Hearts Foundation. And they are helping to connect us with some uh, schools there where there are women, because that is one of the poorest countries in the world. And they are in dire need for so much. And we really hope that in each of the countries that we're working, these women will be role models for others. They will stay. They've actually making a commitment to us that they will stay at least five years in this community or country to help there before they would consider using their degree to leverage elsewhere. And you're, you're focusing on women in particular with these new projects. Yes, absolutely. First of all, we need more strong women role models. But more importantly, because we are working in Africa where the gender inequality is immense, we need to bridge that gap. The only way for a woman to get out of poverty is with an education. And it has also been shown that whereas men will take their earnings and leave, mm -hmm. <laughs> women will educate their children. 
they will raise up their community, they will contribute to their community. And again, it brings everyone up. So we are going to try and bridge some of that gap by educating women and watching what they can do to create magic in their communities. What can our viewers do um, to help you with your endeavors? We need donations. We need people to sponsor these women. We have biographies on our website and okay. photographs. And all of these beautiful young women have agreed to stay in communication with us throughout their degree. And there we're going to be sharing their grades, their experiences. Um, people can either select a single student or they can donate to the program as a whole. And we will make sure that it gets to a student who truly merits the opportunity for a higher education. Wow, well thank you for all that you do. You are, you are really making a difference. We're helping other people make a difference too and that's what really matters. If you want to know more about information about Basic Dignities, please visit their website. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back. I'd like to thank all of my guests for joining us on Spotlight and our friends at Busey Bank for their generous sponsorship of today's show. To learn more about the organizations featured on the show, please visit our website at nctv17.com. And to stay informed on what's happening in our community, sign up to receive our daily news update and like and follow us on Facebook. For Spotlight, I'm Liz Spencer. Thank you for watching. Today's Spotlight is brought to you in part by presenting sponsor, Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise.